So, Chris, I'll tell you, man, I just got back from Connections and and a lot of what you and I talk about um, or have talked about in the past sort of got put on steroids while we were there. And it probably has influenced a little bit more of the conversation that we've been sort of having over the past couple of months. But that being said, I don't want it to cloud what we've talked about uh, and, and the purpose of, of what we're going to discuss, like kind of here and, and, and why we're doing this at all. Um, you know, as a portfolio specialist in the Salesforce practice at Proficient, I'm tasked with, you know, selling not only our delivery model, but also kind of bringing to the C-suite, to the executives, to the businesses that I talk to in manufacturing, what's our point of view and, and how do we think about the solutions that Salesforce has out there? And then you and I reached in, in, into that conversation a little bit deeper and decided, man, we should really, we should talk about this in a little bit more detail and, and sort of formalize this up and, and really do, you know, have a point of view. And so that's what got us here today. Um, you know, from being a seller of software, both at Salesforce and at Oracle and some other places as well in the past, this is my first foray into the services side. So I probably bring too much of a of a point of view of the products and what they can do and not enough of the services, but that's where I think we're a good match and that you're the services side and delivery side. And so we balance each other up, out pretty well, I think, in that regard, in that you're in the accounts, helping them use the software better. Um, and more efficiently than we probably ever thought in the initial outset, and maybe even in a different way than what Salesforce talks to um, their accounts about or our accounts about. So um, that's kind of what I do. And, and tell me, did I get that right about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, being a senior technical architect, you know, we're I'm in the trenches. I'm in the delivery, working with uh, both the client and, and our developers and our business consultants to just understand the solution that was proposed and then how do we how do we build it and uh, you know it always starts with with the foundation of well this is the happy path this is the standard functionality but you know over the years just oh, oh, the experience like no one is ever 100 percent the happy path i always joke is like our goal is 80 20 if we, if we can get you to leverage 80 percent of the salesforce standard features we're doing pretty good that last 20% is probably going to be specific to your needs, whether it's a specific system, you got to integrate some specific business process. And as always, you know, it's always the 20% that costs 80% of your budget. So um, yeah, I, it's what I've been doing for, for 10 years now in, in, in this ecosystem, whether it's, uh, you know, building product catalogs uh, you know, from a CPQ or B2B commerce standpoint, whether it's just, just getting data into that, into Salesforce. Um, it's really going through there and working with manufacturing clients to understand, you know, what are your needs, what are your specific needs and aligning to the platform where we can and then customizing and, and fine tuning it to to their specific needs. So they they get value out of what we're building. We're not just throwing another license, another piece of software at them, but they're going to get value out of it and, and be able to grow with it. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> and and as I as I think about, like, you know, what makes us different than anybody else out there talking about this stuff, right? I, it, I, I almost kind of shudder at using the word expert because I don't think anybody sets out to be an expert. <laughs> they kind of just kind of grow into the role just through experiences and interactions and just over time, right? I mean, you've been doing this for 10 years. I've been doing this for 10 years and, and, and plus on the SaaS sales side and on the consulting side. So I think the power of, of one and one on, on both sides, both from selling Salesforce and now selling consultative services and you're doing the delivery and, and talking to so many different clients. It's that it's that whole makeup of just experience that kind of gives you and I, I think, a different lens on this. But I'll, I'll shy away from the word expert and I'll just say um, perspective, um, whatever you want to call it, it's out there that, that can lend a, uh, lend a little bit of a different lens to the whole thing. You know, and, and when I think through like what's going on today, I mean, you know, we're seeing a lot of budgets being trimmed up. We're seeing a lot of projects being slowed down. There's definitely this, you know, under shuttering of is the economy going to hit a slowdown? Um, are we going to keep on track? I mean, all indicators financially, economically seem to point in a different direction if you're seeing the stock market every day and, and what our clients are doing and how they're speaking. And so there's almost this what's causing the slowdown and, and, and what's going on there. I mean, regardless of what the forces are, we're still seeing it in our accounts, right? They're slowing up and they're and they're trimming and, and looking for cost efficiency. And and that's really a business challenge that's crept up in the last six, eight months that's really starting to come to fruition. 
And as I saw at Connections and as we hear about, it's like the fear of moving forward with technology and specifically manufacturing cloud um, or any of its functionality associated to it. Um, I want to put that kind of like, I want to table that and just talk about what it can do and why maybe rethink about that approach. Do you want to really slow down or do you want to have more efficiency within the business, more visibility in the business, more capabilities to predict um, using features that that Salesforce has built into their solution sets, right? I mean, we heard a lot about AI and we heard a lot about chat GPT and we heard a lot about, you know, their, their data cloud offering and all the, all the different data streams that you can, um, you know, leverage for better insights into the into the manufacturing business itself. And that's kind of the cool part of where you and I got started. It's like, wow, really think about how many areas of a, of a business it, it touches, right? It can touch sales. It can touch, and we don't go into different aspects of this, but right, it can touch sales. It can touch finance. It can touch inventory control. It can touch, um, you know, storage. It can touch, you know, what else did we say? What else can it touch? Um, yeah, it, it, we were t- the forecasting and the sales agreements. You know, I those are two features that that are really sort of the the pinnacle of the product that are get highlighted quite a bit. You know, sales agreements giving you that ability, giving you the data model, but also starting to give you a, a, a process to follow to to capture potential sales. So, you know, for a little background on it, you know, traditionally we have opportunities, net new things inside Salesforce, you're tracking net new sales. This is great. Like I got this hot opportunity that might result of this, but once what happens once you've closed that hot opportunity and now, you know, it's, it's a regular account. It's, it's the everyday account that you're calling every, every quarter to to hit quota or every, you know, whatever, um, whatever frequency you're hitting it at sales agreements, give you that other record type to sort of capture that's that momentum. Like, what do you think, this partner is going to do today, this, this quarter, you know, are they going to do a hundred units, 200 units? Um, it's not, you know, it's, it's not an official agreement. You're not holding anybody to it, but it gives you a data point. It gives you a data point to measure, okay, we're expecting this many sales and we've done this many sales. So what's our gap? Are we short? Are we ahead um, for the quarter, for the year? And now you're getting some valuable sales insight into not just like the hot new deals, but again, the, the traditional run rate business, the business you've already won, and then how healthy it is. And so I really think um, you know, that's a, a process where or a feature that could be adopted and, and a process implemented to, to capture that stuff because it allows you to start having a conversation internally, but also externally with that partner, with that customer. customer. Um, you know, that's where they really push the experience cloud and creating a partner community, you know, a PRM solution, something around that. You need to have this constant contact, this collaboration with your partners, and you can sort of expose that. Um, You can, you know, be able to have a conversation and say, hey, let's log into partner cloud when you're on site with them. Let's take a look, see, you know, you're at 30 units towards the 100 you said you were, you're going to be at, you know, is 100 still accurate or do you think it's going to be lower? And so you're having these these touch points and these conversations sooner and, and more frequently, and that's just fine tuning your data. Um, you're getting better data, you know, every time you're having that conversation with it. Which, you know, that was the big thing was what's what's the downstream effect of having better data, or well, the upstream effect? You know, forecasting's better, uh, operations is better. You kind of know where your revenue's at. You need you know if you need a thousand more widgets or ten thousand more widgets uh, next month. And that's those are just some of those capabilities that sales agreements and then the the forecasting capabilities in manufacturing cloud um, bring out, bring to the table. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, as as a salesperson, right, it's you go, 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 go. You land that deal, you get that sale and and you move on to the next you move on to the next target. Right. You're that's by nature, right? Bright, shiny object. Next opportunity to to close a new deal or to get a new piece of business. And we tend to, unless it's put back in front of us to say, hey, look, there's a lot of mining to be had here still, right? You could get in front of this partner, get in front of this customer and have a productive forward looking conversation because of the reporting being delivered to them in real time to say, hey, the trend is developing here, man. That AI that's built in is saying, hey, the potential here for you to miss your to miss our our inventory forecast is pretty great. We're going to need the sales team to kind of jump in and help here and have that either great conversation or difficult conversation with their customer 
to say, you know, what's really going on here? Was this just a glitch because, you know, there was an efficiency scene in the in the in the in the, in the project that you guys are executing right now, and you expect the run rate to go back to normal in that Windows examples we talked about, right? You ordered yeah. twenty thousand Windows, right? Was it just because, you know, something happened in the project where? a bunch of houses got built at the same time because the subcontractors did a better job than they did for the last two months. So you just came, you know, resources became available and the, and the, and the contracts are like, now we're just, we're not going to need any more. We just found a way to move a little bit faster or no, we've had terrible weather. We're going to miss like all this stuff. And of course that terrible weather, like we have in Colorado where it's been a bunch of hailstorms, there's not a lot of building going on, but they're still going to have to finish that project. It's just going to take them a longer time. What's that going to have as an impact perspective into the inventory systems that that a, a company has to pay to. If you're that window manufacturer, it's like well, we've we're going to sell, you know, you, Mr. Window Distributor, you know, X amount of units per month. Now we have to now we have to warehouse them because we're not moving those as fast, and that's going to cost us. So our cost to store went up, our profitability went down, right? Or can we find a way to move these to another distributor or another partner that can help us move them? But what's the implication of the cost? Because we made the deal with 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 this partner over here, now we got to sell it a little less over here. So now our profitability has been impacted again, right? So when you take that to the C-suite, the, 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 you know, the office of finance, and they're like, what is going on? Like, why are we having these drastic fluctu fluctuations in this part of our business? How do we avoid those conversations, right? And and it's it's just, it touches so many other parts of the enterprise that <clears throat> that I think just don't get realized in that process. It's like, Oh well, yeah, we'll help with forecasting, but that has so many fingers and, and and tentacles to it as it goes throughout the business that I think are important to understand uh, in, in, at, at the end of the day, right? That's it's just a bigger part of the conversation to be to be having with our with our customers and and with our prospects, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, even if you have existing forecasting tools, so you might have Power BI or you might have some other product out there. Um, that's doing the forecasting and reading big data. Um, you, do you have that data point of that sales agreement? Do you have that data point of, well, they said they were going to do this when they did this, you know, you're even with other systems in play, you know, sales agreements can, can, like I said, give you that process and that spot to store that data and it like start to sort of transform your sales process into to having those conversations, those crucial conversations, whether they're good or bad or indifferent, you're having that conversation, you're learning and understanding, and it really just, it's a facilitator and an enabler to it, sales agreements, and then, like I said, a partner community and different things like that. So, um, and that's, I mean, I think that's huge. I think it's, you know, that one piece of data and changing that one piece of process now, I like guess it just has this ripple effect throughout your organization all the way up to the C-suite. And, you know, you you start to have some answers why. There's some, there's soft answers, like you said, well, we got a lot of dealers, partners in Colorado. A lot of hailstorms. They're 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 slowing down. We're going to slow down. You know, it's you you ebb and flow with your partners. You, you mentioned, well, how, can we move this? Can we move these windows someplace else? I mean, you know, other great capabilities. You know, some inventory management to see, you know, who else is working out of that distributor. Can you offer them rebates or something like that? Can you start to go and try to sell to other people and say, you know what, this month we want, you know, in 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 Colorado or in this distribution center, can you get these customers to to buy more of this type of window or something like that? Again, more conversations just had because you were capturing that that piece of data. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's like it's it's the key feature of forward looking ways of doing business as opposed to what arguably would be very traditional today, looking backwards to see what happened and then making a decision a decision as to what could happen in the future, right? Um, if you're looking back at last month, last quarter, well, you're addressing what happened, but how do you stay ahead of that, right? And all those features of like, I mean, I'll tell you that the the question of is AI here to stay and chat GPT, how's that going to play? And let's kind of stand back on the sideline and see, I'll, I'll tell you that, that genie's out of the bottle. And, and <laughs> if you are not leaning into that, um, you're going to get left behind quick because it's definitely one of those technologies, I think. Um, or aspects of technology that's going to take off so super fast. It's like on hyper warp speed. Yeah, there's considerations to worry about when it comes to security and and the power of what it can do. And that does need to have some some priority controls, you know, center of excellence. That's why companies have center of excellence. Like, how do we use this, 
you know, efficiently, effectively, and securely uh, to help us, not hurt us. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 you know, manufacturers, from what I've heard, and, and I'd love your take on this, have been traditionally hesitant on leaning in on AI, right? And and looking at how data can help them make better decisions. They're they're sitting in the war rooms and and they're looking at forecasts from the from historical and going, well, let's compare to last year. Gosh, last year to this year is that's 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 not even comparably close, really, when you think about it and how the yeah. economy's moving. What's your take? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a bigger t trend towards manufacturers in, in any business, but manufacturers sp specifically starting to be data driven and, and making data driven decisions. So, you know, start capturing the data like we're talking about, you know, what are the what are the interesting data points that you need to to make a decision on? on X, Y, and Z, whether it should be a new product or a new sales strategy, anything like that. And then and then have the tools to digest and consume that data and, and make it meaningful to you so you can be actionable on that data. And so I think, you know, we've been, you know, the platforms have been evolving over the years and, and you know, Data Cloud's one of those tools giving us kind of a big bucket to be able to put data into. Uh, CRM Analytics, another platform tool and a big bucket to be able to put data into from an analytics standpoint. Um, those tools, that's what they're there for. They're, they're there to start helping you capture and aggregate data from, from Salesforce, historical data from Salesforce or your other enterprise systems and, and start to try and make some sense out of it. And then AI is just the tool on top of it. Like AI is the next tool instead of having, you know, a data scientist uh, having to come up with an algorithm and different things like that or a room full of data scientists working against it, you know, AI can start to to automate that and, and consume, go through this data and start to give you those insights um, faster than, than you normally would. So it, AI, I think, is the enabler to make all this data and all this work that we've been doing to, to capture data uh, actionable um, in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, yeah, it, it, man, it's, it's one of those, it, it, we talk about, you know, a 360 degree view. Um, there's a 360 degree view of your customer, which is one thing, but there's, there's the 360 degree view of your technology and what it can do. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's technologies out there, right? When you can start to tap into back office systems and other systems of record, invoicing, ordering, um, risk, payment, financial systems, and take that data and ingest it and make logical smart segmentation decisions in real time and put that into the power of the business user and not the data team's hands to sift through and come back about you know six eight weeks later and go okay here's what we got here's what we know it's like my gosh that was a month and a half ago like and and all of a sudden you know condition market conditions have changed seasonalities have changed whatever it has changed and so you're operating again we talk about this it's one of the key foundations of this conversation there's this this point of are we operating behind the line or are we operating ahead of and staying in front of and being proactive as as opposed to reactive because one would argue that reactive means the problem is is uh, the 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 horse is whatever that saying is right <laughs> that horse is out of the gate the genie's out of the bottle whatever yeah too yep. late to change it you know if we'd have known that right if hindsight being 2020 hindsight can't be 2020 anymore in our industry you have to you have to be able to take advantage of what's out there and available so that you can avoid that hindsight 2020 statement within your within yeah. your business right yeah absolutely and i think so. yeah and that, you know bringing it back yeah, bringing it back around i mean i think sales agreements and the other capabilities of uh, manufacturing cloud you know forecasting and and some of the additional features tableau crm the prm piece all that stuff they're they're practical, they're pragmatic, down to earth features that that any company can see some value of implementing. You know, whether you're whether you're you're at that point where you're you're still using spreadsheets for for forecasting, and those spreadsheets are getting cumbersome, and you want to move out of that, or if you're a larger enterprise and you you know you you have big data analytics and different things like that, there's still value in in manufacturing cloud in these features and capabilities. Um, it, it's like you know. Basic blocking and tackling, I feel like, is where these features come into play. Um, fundamental to just improving your business and transforming your business, not just digitizing existing processes, but like transforming how you do business to, to, to like you said, start looking ahead 
and being proactive on things um, and, and fundamentally being, you know, data driven and, and data insightful. So. Yeah, couldn't agree more. It's it, it's it's an imperative anymore to start looking at this um, with with not hesitation, but with a welcoming um, aspect, I think, to it because because it's here to stay and there's so many capabilities to help lend uh, positive nah, positivity is not the right word, but just to lend, you know, uh, an easier way to do business process, right? And starting starting small, right? Find those single use cases that mean the most with, you know, but are the easiest to pretty much execute on and then grow from there. Like you, you're not going to do this in a day, right? You're not going to boil the yeah. ocean, but it's very much a, well, I mean, you've seen it in projects. It's like the manufacturers or that you work with and the cu customers that you work with, right? They're not boiling the ocean. They're like, let's just start with this. And then we can grow from there. But as we get used to it, we you know started with with you know a, a, a small fire. Now we have a bonfire of success and adoption across the organization, because that's the other thing to keep your eyes on too, is the adoption and and the utilization of the processes that you're putting in place. Are are the hands on the keyboards actually doing what you know, they're designed to do and, and using this that we set up? Yeah, I think that's the other part of the equation. So, you know, we've we've talked about the capabilities of of manufacturing cloud and just the broader capabilities of the the Salesforce platform. Uh, it's one it's one piece of the puzzle, right? You know, it's people, process, and technology. And Salesforce, you know, brings these technologies to the table. Like, there's no doubt that there's some some great features, great functionality across there. But just buying Salesforce licensing, standing the org up, you know, finding a partner to 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 build to set up. <laughs> sales agreements or whichever feature you want, that's only part of the battle. You really got to think about that that process and the people side of it, identifying what that new sales process should be. I mean, obviously look at how you're doing it, but but reimagine the sales process and what it looks like from a customer and the, the best possible experience that that you could give your customer that you're dealing with. And then and then the people like being able to train those people. So you know organizational change management is 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 just a whole other a whole other ball game next to just Salesforce development. And I think that's one of the the key benefits of, of working with us with working with Proficient is is we have a whole business unit dedicated to organizational change that we can partner with in the same project at the same time to be able to say, okay, this is the features and the process change that we wanna we want to introduce, we want to roll out. Like what's the best way to do that to get everybody on on pace? Because you're absolutely right. Like you know you can build we can build a partner community we can build out sales agreements we can build salesforce out but if the people doing the work don't get it doesn't work jive with them or they just don't understand it you're not going to get that value out of the investment you made and then i think too um you don't have to boil the ocean as well i think it's important to 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 think about it in in the right size steps and i mean that's going to be different for every manufacturer you know might be very small for a smaller organization they must be much larger um, for a larger organization, but you know, I think that's where where we have a lot of success is we with our methodology. You know, one of the benefits of of selling the solutions, um, you know, selling services versus just the the product themselves is, you know, you get a team that's skilled in in the technology in being able to build and deliver it, um, but you also get a team that has a methodology that leads to a success, um, a, a, a satisfied customer, our client in the end. You know, and for our clients happy, then you know the rest of their <laughs> their their bosses, their their team, their team is happy. And I think that's just a good recipe for for long term success. Um, you know, working with the Salesforce partner, working with the client. You know, it, it, it comes back to it's it's easier, just like with the sales agreements, is easier to to sell to an existing company than it is to get another another customer. And you know, I think that's that's one of the benefits working with us is we we try to build those relationships and and think about our clients just like uh, just like they're important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you guys do a great job on the delivery side and you know, we're we're consistently, you know, sharpening our sword on the on the on the engagement side, the consulting side and the upfront to sort of, you know, not only tackle the issue at hand that's brought to us with our with our prospects and our customers, but then just to, you know, really sort of draw out the the possibilities of where they can think about going with the technology. Cause you know, as we've seen historically, we typically walk into customers and they're like, I gotta do this, I gotta solve this. And the question needs to be asked, I think, well, yeah, but why? Why are you doing that? And where are you ultimately going, right? Cause there's the, right now I gotta fix. And then there's the, but once that's fixed, then where are you gonna go? 
right? So, and that's somebody in my in my career a long time ago said, you know, we can help anywhere we need to help, right? Don't walking in and just throwing technology at the problem without understanding the problem is a recipe for disaster, right? And and so the business problems and the outcomes that are required, great place to start. The technology that supports that, that's where you plug that in. The people, the process, the outcome, to your point, right? How are you going to manage that once it's constructed and and operationalized within your within your company um, is what's going to create the success. The technology alone can't do it unless yep. people know how to use it, right? Um, and but and we can set up all the all the workflows in the world to, to you know to help gain vis- visibility. But if nobody's using them, they're useless, yep. right? So yeah, those are I think, great points. Yeah, and I would say I think you know from the delivery standpoint, you know I think that's where that upfront discovery, the, the initial engagement, that's where it's always uh, interesting because to your point, you know. It's it's a contract. It's a statement of work. We need you to solve this problem, but I mean, we walk into it and we look for the bigger picture. We look, okay, today we need to build this, but how does this affect tomorrow? And and how these other processes that we traditionally see in manufacturing, lead intake or your product catalog or these things, how are you doing on those things? Because if we build it this way, it's going to have this impact on those things down the road, and we're not sure if that's a positive or a negative. So I think identifying like there is an immediate need that needs to be tackled and and right-sizing that immediate fix so that it's not fixing too much but not fixing too little still get value out of the engagement but then yeah looking ahead to that roadmap again being forward thinking and think about okay what's your next thing you want to do with salesforce or within this business process how, how does that grow or benefit your business and then what's that right technology is there is there a salesforce product or again is there a better product on the market um, we don't want to build Salesforce for the Salesforce fact. We want to build it because it's the right technology, the right tool. And in a lot of cases, it is. It absolutely is. Yeah, yeah, great point. I think it's probably a, a, a good spot to kind of just wrap that up and just, you know, go back to, you know, the, the theme of the conversation, right? How do we take what we're what we're currently doing today and move that forward? How do we how do we Take into account historical for sure, that plays a part, but how do we stay forward thinking and stay ahead of the next big problem that could occur? Be predictive instead of reactive in in the way in which we do business and help the company be more financially productive with insights that are being generated out of the technology and, and, and the configuration of that technology into a myriad of systems for the purposes of you know, inventory or cost controls or proactive selling. Uh, or or redistribution or order management systems, uh, reporting, right? It touches all of those aspects, right? Okay. Um, you know, and generating the 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 right reporting to the right groups of people that need to see it in a proactive manner. Um, and then finally, you know, the the last point is, you know, those the people and the process, right? You know, around that technology and the workflows and those three things right there. I mean, in the spirit of keeping keeping it to three, I think pretty much wrap up the theme of the conversation that that you know we've been trying to you know have for a while now <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah it's uh so, you know people process and technology and yeah, um when you simple. get those all all aligned um and marching in the same order there, yeah. there's a lot of value to be gained and everybody everybody's happy in the end 